Good morning. Merry Christmas. Didn't it feel different waking up this morning? Such a beautiful day, sunny and cold and wonderful. Hopefully you grabbed a bulletin. Service is going to be a little bit different today, a combination of uh, Christmas service and traditional Sunday worship. So we're going to begin our time this morning opening up in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you so much for this baby that we've been expecting all of Advent. We thank you, Lord, for the gift, the wonderful present of your presence in our life. And Lord, today as we gather for worship, we do so in adoration of you. We thank you for the meaning of Christmas, for the hope, for the awareness this morning that something is different and new. Lord, we ask you to be with us during this service, to have your spirit move about this room and in our lives, so that Lord, when we leave here in just a little bit, we leave so differently. In your name we pray. Amen. First coming by Madeline Lengel. He did not wait till the world was ready, till men and nations were at peace. He came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. He did not wait for the perfect time. He came when the need was deep and great. He dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. He did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy he came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt. To a world like ours, of anguish, shame he came, and his light would not go out. He came to a world which did not mesh, to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. In mystery of the world made flesh, the maker of the stars was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane to raise our songs with joyful voice, for to share our grief, to touch our pain, he came with love. Rejoice, rejoice.
please rise for the call to worship. <laughs> oh, come, let us adore him, whose coming was announced by the prophets. Oh, come, let us adore him, whose message was the Oh, come, let us adore him, whose glory was hailed by the shepherds. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Let's sing hymn number So we're missing this morning Jim, Olivia Hawkins, and Hallie. So we have a team going to Haiti very soon. We're leaving this week. And we're going to pray over those who are here. And we ask you to pray the entire time that they're gone for their safety, for their ministry. So give us the days that we can pray for you. So the 27th to the 5th is a good range for us to pray and lift up our, our team. So let's pray this morning. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the willingness to serve. We thank you for the entire team that's going, uh, for Jim and for Hallie and for Olivia, for Caroline and for Matt. Father, we pray for their safety. We pray for blessings on all with whom they come in contact with. Uh, we pray for their own their own walk with you, Lord, that this time be not just a time of service, but a time of growth, a time where they can bring back as much as they give. And Lord, we, we thank you for their example, for their willingness to uh, give their time and their energy and their talents to serve you, Lord. 
And Father, we pray that uh, the time is, is just used to pour out blessings, to open up them to a world and, and a world to you, Father. Guide them, protect them, and bring them back safely, we pray. Amen. Join in a chorus of rocks and trees. We join with the moon and the wind and the seas. With the magi who saw the newborn boy, we sing of Christmas joy. We sing. Love's Incarnate Birth by Lucy Shaw. Observe and contemplate, make real, bring to be. Because we note the falling tree, the sound is truly heard. Look, the sunrise, wait. It needs us to look, to see, to hear and speak the word. Observe and contemplate the cosmos and our little earth. Observing, we affirm the worth of sun and stars and light unfurled. So, let us seeing celebrate the glory of love's incarnate birth and sing its joy to all the world. Observe and contemplate, make real, affirm, say yes. And in this season, sing and bless wind, ice, snow, rabbit and bird, comet 
and Quark, things small and great. Oh, observe and joyfully confess the birth of love's most lovely word. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, today we have given you thanks for the gift of your son. And Lord, today we do so again. We thank you for the gift of our lives, for the chance to be here in your sanctuary, to be able to worship you in freedom and in openness. We thank you for the gift of, of sunshine and the change in seasons and a beautiful reminder today, Lord, that there is hope that there is peace, and that there is goodwill among men. Father, as we go out into your world in a little bit, allow us to take that with us, the joy of your birth, the joy of this season. Father, we pray that it not be one day for us, but it be that it, our lifestyle, our choice we make every single day to sing out just as the angels did, to testify to the great good news, of peace and goodwill to all men. Lord, as we give thanks today, we are reminded that we also live in a broken and fallen world. And so we, we turn to you, we hand over our needs and our brokenness. We pray for the physical needs that we have. We pray for those of us who are struggling with emotional, relational problems. Father, we pray for those who, for today, it is, it is no different. We pray for the places of the world where darkness still reigns. We 
pray for the countries that still feel persecution. Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ all over. We ask for you to unite us, to allow us to feel that hope and that unity and peace today, we pray. Amen. We've been talking about the story throughout all of scripture, the story that culminates with this baby, but a story that was prophesied all the way back from Genesis. And so today you're going to hear that story through scripture. There will be times during that story where we have different props, and at that time I'll ask for those who have those various props to come up. You're going to have to pass through Howl land to get to the tree, um, so just watch out for little feet, uh, not to be tripped, but we'll hang the ornaments on the tree. Let's begin. Way back at the beginning of time, a long, long, long ago, long before anyone can remember, God made the world, but it didn't look the way that it does now, because there were no people. There were no animals or birds, no trees or bushes or flowers. Everything was lonely and dark. Then God said, let there be light. And light came. God was pleased with it, and he called the light day. And when the day was gone and the darkness came again, God, God called that darkness night. God did these things on the first day of creation. And then God made the sky. If you have clouds, you can go ahead and put them on the tree. God called the sky heaven. And God did this on the second day of creation. And then God said that the waters were covering the earth should come, become oceans and lakes. If you have waves, come on up. And the earth should appear. God made the grass grow. If you have grass. And the flowers, if you have flowers. And the trees, if you have trees. All of this was on the third day of creation. Feel free to walk all the way up and around, too. Here comes the forest. On the fourth day, God let the sun shine in the daytime. If you have sun, come on up. And the moon and the stars at night, if you have the moon and stars. On the fifth day, God made great sea creatures and fish. If you have fish, come up. He made the birds. If you have birds. Some like ducks and geese live near the water. Others like eagles, robins, pigeons, and wrens lived in the woods and the fields. And on the sixth day of creation, God made the animals. Those that were wild and live out in the forest, such as elephants and lions and tigers and bears. And those that are tame and useful, such as rabbits, horses, cows, and sheep. And God was pleased with all of these things. And then God created people. God created them good and in his own image. Our first parents, Adam and Eve, were tempted by Satan and fell into sin and disobedience. Did God create people so sinful and disobedient? 
No, God created them good and in his own image. God made them to love him and live in happiness with him. By their disobedience, Adam and Eve robbed themselves and all their descendants of these gifts. We could not save ourselves from punishment, but God had a plan to restore our lives. God sent his son Jesus into the world to become the savior for lost humanity. God sent prophets to foretell Christ's birth. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and we will call him Emmanuel. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will, who will be the ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. In those days, the Jews were under the rule of the Romans. They had to do whatever the emperor of Rome and his assistants told them to. The emperor instructed everyone to go to the city where their ancestors had lived so that the Roman officers could record their names. So Joseph and Mary went to Bethlehem where King David used to live because there were relatives of his, though David had lived hundreds of years before Joseph and Mary were born. You have Joseph and Mary, you can bring those up. But when they arrived at Bethlehem, there was no room for them at the inn. And so they went out to the stable where the donkeys and camels were kept to sleep on the straw on the floor. While they were resting in the stable, Mary's baby was born. He was the son that the angel Gabriel had told her about. Yes, Jesus was born there in the stable. And Mary dressed him in some baby clothes she had brought and wrapped him up in a blanket and laid him in a manger. If you have Jesus, you can bring Jesus up. That same night, shepherds in the field outside the town were watching their sheep, to, trying to protect them from wild animals. Suddenly, an angel surrounded by bright light appeared to them. The shepherds were very frightened, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those who, on whom his favor rests. After the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's hurry to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. You have the shepherds and the angels. Come on up. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Later, some men who studied the stars came to Jerusalem from a distant land. If you have your wise men, bring them up. They knew from seeing the star that Jesus had been born, and so they went to Bethlehem. As they went, the star that had seen appeared to them again, and it seemed to stand right over a certain place. They went in and saw the baby there with his mother, Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. They gave presents to the new king, precious gifts of gold and spices. Join us in singing hymn number 163.
So Christ came into the world to free his people from their sin. Sin that started with Adam and Eve. God loved this world so much that he gave his only son to pay the price for the sins of the world. By accepting Jesus' gift of salvation, many people through the ages have been given real joy. That's why even today, we celebrate his coming to earth, for this is the time of joy for all God's people. Many people worship Jesus, the newborn child, that first Christmas. That worship has continued for more than 2,000 years. Today, we too worship and serve the King of Kings, who now reigns in heaven. From all walks of life and all generations, we are called to worship by giving himself, ourselves to him. Come all who bow before him in repentance and humility. Come all who are burdened with care, with your fears, your doubts, and your unbelief. Come. Come with your joys, with your highest ambitions, with your greatest abilities. Come with your love. Come with thanksgiving to share in this dark world. Come to Jesus with your heart. Christ will use you to tell others his story of love and grace. Come, worship, and live. Boys and girls, moms and dads, grandpas and grandmas, and everyone gathered here today who was born this day for our salvation, our life, our eternal hope. Join me in singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Most Amazing Word by Madeline Langell. Thank you, God, for being born, you who first invented birth, universe, galaxies, the earth. When your world was tired and worn, you came laughing on the morn. Thank you, Most Amazing Word, for your silence in the womb where there was so little room, yet the still small voice was heard throughout a planet dark and blurred. Merry Christmas, wondrous day. 
maker of the universe, you the end and you the source, come to share in human clay and yourself to show the way. Let's close in prayer. Gracious God, take us now forth into your world. Remind us today that this is not just one day. Allow us to share and to testify and to live out your story, we pray. Amen. Thank you.